Hey everyone, what is going on? Guess what? Time for another video short. This one is going to be on Flexbox. Since we're dealing with a little bit of HTML now, I thought it would be a good time to sneak in and watch my monitor turn off and show you some easy ways to align things and maybe do some easy layouts and it'll help you with your websites. And I thought while doing that, I will also show you some other tools and some other technologies so that we can demonstrate the Flexbox. Let's check it out. First thing I'm going to do is launch VS Code, which is a different editor than we've been using in this channel. If you need to install VS Code, there is an instructional video in the playlist on prerequisites for the beginner course, or you can just head over and install it. If your icon is not green down here, that's okay. I have the insiders version of Visual Studio Code, which is just kind of uh, nightly builds. The other normal VS Code is released on a regu more regular basis. All right, I'm gonna go up to terminal and new terminal and i'm going to navigate to my projects folder i'm going to make a directory called video short dash flexbox And now that I'm in that directory, I am going to create a React app and we're gonna use that as our example. In order to follow along with this video, you're gonna not only need VS Code, but you're gonna need Node and uh, NPM, which comes with Node. If you need to install any of those and you don't know how, check out the prerequisite video. It covers all that stuff. To create our React app, we're gonna type NPX, create, React app, which is the name of the React CLI that's going to generate the project. We're going to give our project a name. We'll call it Flexbox Short. And we're going to give it a dash dash template of TypeScript, because I like to use TypeScript. If you prefer to use JavaScript, just leave the dash dash template TypeScript out. And then I'm also gonna do use NPM to use NPM instead of yarn. At this point, they're really, really similar. And since most of the other technologies I use use NPM, I just like to keep it all the same. So NPX will go out and download the latest Create React app. And once it does that, it will fill in all of our node modules that are needed to create a React application. Okay, when it's done, it tells you that you can now CD into your project that we named Flexbox Short. So there's a directory called Flexbox Short. And if we type npm start, then it will run our app. Before I do that, I'm gonna click on this Explorer button and open up this pane. If it's already there, you don't have to do that. And I'm gonna click Open Folder. You can also use Open Folder here in the Quick Start and File, Open Folder, all do the same thing. So I'm gonna open that folder, which on my machine is Projects Video Short Flexbox, and then we'll go inside our Flexbox short that was generated. So if you can see the source folder, then you're in the right spot. We will select that folder. That restarts VS Code, so we should open up a new terminal as well, and it'll open in the right directory. And so our files are in the source folder, but let's go ahead and type npm start and that will pop open a browser and show us our simple react site that was generated all right and there we are and what it says is if we edit source slash app dot tsx and we save it will reload that site so what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to snap that monitor to half screen and then i'm going to do the same thing with this one I'm gonna grab it at the top and snap it onto the left side. So I've got 
VS Code on the left and Chrome on the right. I guess I can make that a little taller. And what it says is go into source app.tsx. So inside source, here's app.tsx. So there is my code. Um, let me see if I can make that bigger. All right. And I just use control plus to do that. Um, now it's so big, I can't see it. So let's go down a little bit. All right, hopefully that's big enough. Um, I'm gonna click on this Explorer button just so that we have all code showing here. All right, so if I get rid of this edit app.tsx and save and reload, I can say, hello React app. And if I hit Control S to save, it automatically reloads the browser and gives me my hello React app. So if I wanna get rid of this learn React link, here's the A tag with the learn React. I can delete that, save and it is gone. The logo is this image. So I'm gonna get rid of everything except the outer div and an H1 that says hello. And I'm gonna get rid of the class. And there we go. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about Flexbox. The best way to learn Flexbox is from the documentation that they put together on CSS tricks. Uh, they did not create the Flexbox, but they break it down in such a great way. Um, kudos to those guys for putting this together. I use it as reference all the time. Um, and so you can always come here and check it out. So. If we get right down to the Flexbox properties, this page is divided into two sides, the left side of the page and the right side of the page. For now, we're gonna ignore the right side of the page. So on the left side of the page, what it says is to use a Flexbox, you have to create a container. So a container is just an HTML element, which is really commonly a div. So first I wanted to show you how normally to do this in HTML. So I'm gonna to go to codepen.io and create a new pen. And so if I create a div and a slash div, we don't see anything down here. If I put an H1 that says hello, then we see hello. Let me give my div a class. My class is gonna be called container. So if I define a dot container here, whatever I put inside this curly brace section will apply to this div and its children. So for instance, if I put a border of one pixel solid red, then you can see that my div goes all the way across the page and it has a one pixel red border. Now the H1 itself is giving some padding on the top and bottom. So if I get rid of that and just put the word hello, it'll be smaller, but you notice all the padding went away. So if I wanted to pad the inside of my div, I would just add some padding let's say 20 pixels, and that will pad the top, right, bottom, and left. So anything that I put inside here. So let's actually put this hello in another div. And we'll give this a class of child. And then I'll create a dot child. And we'll give it a border of one pixel solid green. That might be hard to see. <laughs> Let's make it darker. Okay, so now you see that I have the padding inside my container, but I don't have any padding inside 
my second div. So classes will typically work on the first child, but it won't work inside the child. So if I have two divs, then I get two hellos with no space between them because I've stacked divs and the only thing that child has is a one pixel border. All right, so let's take this into React and and change it. The only thing we have to worry about in React is this word class can't be used because React uses that for its own class types. You can create a React class. So when you're using the HTML classes like we are here, the class becomes class name. So let's go back to React in VS Code. I'm gonna copy and paste in that same stuff. And so we're gonna make this class name and the N in name is capitalized. And now we'll go into index.css, sorry, we'll go into app.css. I'm gonna delete everything that's here. And now I'm going to copy in my two classes. Let's go back to our split screen for now. Oops, missed it. There we go. And I'm gonna paste that in there and save both files. And you can see that it's doing the same thing that it did in our code pen, but now we're able to do it in React. I just wanted to show you that you don't use class in React. We don't have our logo in the page anymore, so we can get rid of that, but we are importing our app CSS where we're putting our classes everything else is fine. All right, let's look at Flexbox. So we have our container and now we want to put some elements in our container like like divs. So the first thing that it says is if you want to use your Flexbox, then your container has to have display flex in it. So we're going to add that. So watch my two hellos that are stacked here in my container. I'm going to add display flex and hit save. And now my hellos are side by side. And if you notice, they're no longer taking up the whole width of the document the way they were before. So let's keep going. Well, now there's a flex dash direction and that determines whether they sit side by side, whether they flow from left to right whether they flow from right to left or whether they flow from top to bottom or bottom to top. So if I put, we're gonna replace hello with item one and item two. So if we save that first, you can see item one is to the left, item two is to the right. Um, let me blow that up a little bit too, there we go. All right, and so we can do flex dash direction and we can use one of these row, row dash reverse, column or column dash reverse. So let's try those. In our CSS, we're going to do flex dash direction and we already did row, row is the default. So let's try row reverse. And when I hit save, notice now it goes two and then one instead of one and then two. And because it's reversed, it's aligning it to the right instead of the left. We can also try column. And column will stack one and two and column reverse and save that. And we get item two and then one. So we're going to leave it as row so since that's the default that's less we have to put in there but that's how that works flex wrap is when you hit the end of your container what does it do it'll either try to fit on one line or you can have it wrap to the next line so you can mark it as no wrap or you can mark it as wrap or wrap reverse let's go to justify content because this one's neat so let's do justify content and it defaults to flex start. But what if we wanted it 
centered. So if I put center and save that, now our item is centered in the parent div. If we do flex end, it'll write a line. And again, it's only right aligning with a 20 pixel border because or padding because we have padding set to 20 pixels. If we didn't have that and we just had zero pixels of padding, then it wouldn't pad anything and it would snap right to the front or the middle or the start. So that's flex start, flex end, and center. There's also a couple others which are really cool like space between, space around, or space evenly. So space between I use that a lot when I'm making like menu items, like a layout for a website where I'll have the name of the site and a logo on the left. And then I want the login button on the right. So it will always take up the right amount of space. Even if my browser gets bigger, right, it's still snapping to the right and the left. It adjusts as, as my browser adjusts. All right. So we have those we can choose from. We also have align items, whether our flex start, flex end, center, or stretch, or baseline is within our div from top to bottom. In order to show you the align dash items, I have to take off the padding. And we will give it a min height of, let's say, 40 pixels. or let's, let's do 140 pixels. So now you can see our div is stretching from top to bottom. And if we align items center, it centers. If we want to flex end, they will snap to the bottom. And we can do any of these others like flex start. And of course, the stretch was what we started off with. Stretch is the default. Align content is more uh, for multi line content, so I don't end up using that as much. And that's that. So now let's talk about the children on the right side. This is our child. This is everything inside of our container. So one thing to note here is that your container and your your classes that you assign in your container are only for the container. They don't affect the child. So if I mark the container as align items flex start each of these divs will align flex start but if there's another div inside here they will not be affected so you can start another flex box and nest your flex boxes one inside the other so the properties for the children we're going to mostly look at flex grow without it the div ends at the end of the content but when I add flex grow to the child and save, now they will take up as much room as they can on the same line. So item one will only go halfway because flex grow one is applying to both children because both of these divs have the child class applied. So they both have a flex grow of one on them. So it would, it, this is a ratio also, so it can be a little confusing. If I had um, a child one, and let's make one of these child one. So now I have a child and a child one class. So nothing should change here, but then if I go in here and I say, I want this to be a two to one ratio, then the item one, which is the child class, will have twice the size of the item class. So you can see that it's not an even split anymore. 
And so if you do two and two, it's gonna be the same as one and one because then it splits that ratio evenly. And then you can also have a, a flex shrink, which um, allows the item to shrink if it needs to. Okay, my stuff just crashed, so uh, hopefully I'm picking up somewhere near where I was. <laughs> Uh, so we were talking about flex shrink, and so by marking our flex shrink, we are able to shrink an item as well as grow an item. So we can combine those two into a flex. So let's get rid of this, and I'm just going to do a flex one. So the syntax for the flex is flex and then the grow amount and the shrink amount, or you could do a flex basis. Let's set the flex to zero space one space auto. So this is the default. And by doing that, what we're telling it is the grow is a zero, the shrink is a one, and the flex basis is auto which is the default for the basis, which defines the default size of the element. So let's say that our children, our child one, which is this item one, it should not grow past its content. It can shrink to its content, but its default size is, oops, its default size is 150 pixels. So then what it'll do is it'll stretch to 150 pixels and it won't go smaller than that, but it it can go larger than that. I'm sorry, the other way around. It can't, the flex grow is zero, so it won't grow farther than the default size and it will shrink if it needs to. I don't know with just two items if I'm gonna be able to collapse this browser enough to show it. Uh, no, I can't get close enough, but it would collapse that. If we wanted it to also expand, then we could add the one. And so if we, by doing a one, you're basically telling it, take up all the size it can. So you really don't need these two others. You, you can just tell flex one, will say, take up all the available space until you hit another item. And so with that, in mind, now we can create some really complex items. So let's create uh, from scratch. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of item one. Let's let's get rid of everything except our div. So right now we are in an empty div. Um, we do have a minimum height, which I guess we can leave for now. Okay, so let's create something kind of like this Shopify landing page. We're not gonna obviously have time to make it look good like this, but just layout wise, we have a top bar here with some items. We have a main header. And so let's just concentrate on these two green areas. So the way I look at this is I see, um, like I see, uh, I see one big rectangle here, and then I see two rectangles stacked on top of each other here. And then inside here, I see another rectangle laid out horizontally. So I think I have one master container that has both the dark and the light green. And then within that container, I have two divs stacked. And then in the first div, I have a flex box that is horizontal that lays out links. And the second div has um, two columns in it, one with the information here and the other with the information on the right. So first let's do the whole outer container and we already have a div with a container class. Um, let's do another div 
inside there. So this one will be our, we'll call it top nav. And then below that one, we're gonna have our, we'll just call the, the light green area, the body. Um, get rid of the word nav and let's let's get those stacked first so if we look at our app here we have a top nav on the right and a body next to it so that's not good so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to wipe out these two child divs because we're not using those or child classes i mean um, we'll leave the red border just for now so we can see. We don't really have a min height. I'm going to take that out. And if we look back at our help, we want, oops, we want our flex box. So we need our display flex. I already have that from earlier. And our flex direction, we want to go from top to bottom. So that's going to be column. So let's add a flex direction of column and let's see what that gives us all right now they're stacked one on top of the other so that's good so far i'm gonna remove these other two until we need them because this is what we got so far so far so good and let's compare that to what we have here so Inside the top nav, I'm going to put another div. And in here, we'll have um, the logo. And let's say start. And let's just divide that up and put our start free trial button on the other side just to save some time. So we'll say uh, start free trial. So that's gonna go across this div. So I'm gonna give this a class name of top nav. And then for our body, we will have another two divs inside it. So the first one is gonna be the um, the left side and the other one's going to be the right side. So let's just get that first so that we can have our logo, the word start next to it. And then on the other side, a start free trial, we'll make ours a link instead of a button. And then in our next div, we'll have a left and a right, but let's see what we start with just by adding divs. So everything's in a line, that's not good for us. So what do we need to do to get our logo and our start and our everything uh, here across the top nav? That's another flex box, right? That's a, a flex direction row. So let's create around our logo, our top nav actually should start another flex box. Because in our container, we've got this top nav and it can also, and in addition to being a top nav, uh, I can say display flex. And remember display flex defaults to row. So now our logo, our start and our start free trial are in our top nav. So just so we can see it just for Display purposes, I'm gonna make this um, blue. So there's our nav, and then we're gonna have our uh, body, we'll just call it body section. And the body section will have, um, we'll just give it a, a gray, and let's, take our body section and add that to our body section div. And body section. And so now we've got our gray, it's kind of hard to see, but it's there. So we're, we're getting there, right? Uh, so now we've got to keep our logo and our start on one side, so they have to be together. 
and then this start free trial has to be on another. So I'm gonna wrap those in their own div. So logo and start will be inside their own child div. Um, you won't see any difference yet other than it now moved the start. It now moved logo and start. It's got those stacked. The reason it stacked it is because remember when I said if you put a class on this div, it only affects its direct children. So this div is actually flex direction row, but anything inside it, it's lost. It's back to a standard plain old div. So we need this to be, um, we'll call this uh, left top nav. And then let's put that one right here. All right, and we'll make that a display flex. So that puts us back in the right ballpark here. And so we have our top nav, which is a flex box. And that flex box has a left nav and this start free trial. And we have another flex box on left top nav that puts these two guys next to each other. Otherwise they would stack because divs, remember, a div takes up the whole line. But if we put it in a flex box, then we can tell it how to lay out. So now we really want uh, some space between this div of the top left, which is just logo and start, which is these two guys. So that's in one container and start free trial is just in its own div. So if we go to the top nav and tell it to split those, so we can go into our top nav and we can, we can do um, justify content and we want space between. And when I hit save there, now we're starting to look like something. So we've got our logo and our start and our start free trial. And if you wanted to actually like make this look a little better, we could make the top nav, we could give it a uh, background color of, I don't know what that green is. I'm gonna find out though. I'm gonna right click and inspect. And that nav is this background color. So I'm gonna steal that. And so that'll be our background color. Now we've gotta make our text white though. So I'm just gonna do color white. Oops, make that a, there we go. Okay, so we got our dark green. And we need some space between logo and start. Uh, and we also need some nice spacing around. If you look how high this is, there's padding around the top and bottoms and stuff. So let's go into our uh, top nav and we'll add some padding, maybe like 20 pixels or so. That might be too much. So let's make it maybe 10. That looks better. And then in our uh, top left, left top nav, we probably want to space those out. So we'll just make a class called um, menu item, and then they can all have menu item, the ones that we want to space out. So let's add a menu item and we'll just do a margin right of uh, 20 pixels. And so now we got our logo and our start and our start free trial. And so to make this one, um, we have our div with a background. Let's grab that color. I'm gonna do an inspect on, uh, let's see. See if we can find the background color. Might be under main. No. Not always easy to find. 
Let's try this div. There it is. Okay, so this is our body section. So we're going to make a background color of that. And when I save, good. Let's also make our, um, our text color white. And now we need our left and our right in here to be side by side. That sounds like a flex box to me. So body section actually becomes a flex box. So we will do a display flex. And we will, uh, let's do justify content. If we do that and then we add 40 pixels. I think that looks closer to where we're at. And then we can like, let's grab business name generator. So that's going to be like maybe an H2 and then on the right, we just have this image. So we'll just say image. And the image in body section, the image is not spaced correctly. So we should be able to do a line item center on that. And then just grab that. Put it in a paragraph. Um, so we're no longer, we're no longer honoring the two sides. So space between is not going to work. Center is not going to work. So let's do a flex start. Let's try with a body section. Let's look back at this and look at our wrap options. So we have flex wrap wrap. See what that does. And what we want for body left is flex row zero shrink one try 300 pixels as a default. Let's try 250. All right. So that's a little better. And then So if we do space around, I think that's looking much better. Um, we might be able to get rid of some of that padding. Um, but you get the idea that we can quickly lay out a site here. And if we get rid of our borders on all of them, then it really starts to shape up. So when you need to align things in HTML, you can use the Flexbox to make things easier on yourself. Um, I, I definitely want to point out that I am not a pro at uh, design. Uh, I'm not a designer. I'm a developer. But I can hack away at things little by little and get the desired output that I want. And I can use frameworks like bootstrap and material design and things like that to make my layouts look good. And that's the real key is you want things to look decent and you'd be surprised how many really ugly applications are out there because developers don't learn some of the uh, simple tricks and some of the things like Flexbox and display grid and things like that. I may have another one of these on display grid, um, but 
you know, use myself as an example and don't be afraid to keep referring to, you know, the, the Flexbox documentation. Don't be afraid to look at other samples and maybe not steal their exact colors and layouts. That was just for an example, but, you know, definitely look at what other sites do. They're successful brands and they've done a lot of research that people like me don't have time to look at. So you can kind of find a site that functionally looks like what you want and, you know, take some of those ideas and create something yourself. Uh, I guarantee you Shopify did not come up with this exact template all on their own, all without looking at any other sites. Everybody is learning and using things from others. So uh, that's my little sample of my flex box. Um, I will go ahead and convert this into a code pen and uh, I'll, I'll share the link in the description so that you can go to this code pen and check out and you can actually make changes to this code pen. Thanks for joining. I hope this was cool and I hope that, you know, you can use some of these things. If you build something with Flexbox, send me a, send me a ping on social media or comment on this video. I'd love to see what you created and if you have any questions or you can't figure out how to get something to lay out, um, again, I'm not a, a, a pro at this, but I can usually figure out what I need to do and I can probably um, make you some suggestions and give you a hand. So it's uh, what we do. We help each other out. So that's it for today. And uh, I guess I'll see you in the next episode online.